The first complete Bible in the English language is attributed to John Wycliffe, who would translate the scriptures from Latin into what is called Middle English by about 1384. Uh, John Wycliffe is, is really called the morning star of the Reformation because Wycliffe believed things that the Reformers uh, picked up and believed, uh, oh, more than a hundred years later, like uh, William Tyndall and, and Martin Luther and those Reformers at that time. Wycliffe trained his followers to go out and preach to the people. They were known as Lollards and were so effective, it was said that if a man met two men on the street in England, one of them would be a Lollard. But because England was still a Catholic country, Wycliffe's followers suffered greatly, and many of them were put to death. During the um, 14th century, uh, before the onset of, of the English Protestant Reformation, Lollards, when they were captured, they were burned at the stake, and if they had any copies of Wycliffe's uh, translation, uh, then those uh, translations were, were tied around their necks and they, those translations were burned along with their owners. Like the Pilgrim Church that had come before him, Wycliffe taught that the authority of the scriptures was greater than the authority of any man. He said that we ought to believe in the authority of no man unless he say the word of God, that if any man in earth, either angel of heaven, teacheth us contrary of holy writ, we should flee from him as from the foul fiend of hell, and hold us steadfastly to the truth and freedom of the holy gospel of Jesus Christ. In addition to translating the scriptures, Wycliffe became known for rejecting the most deadly doctrine of the Dark Ages, transubstantiation. J.C. Ryle makes it clear in his writings why the reformers were under attack because they went against what the Roman Catholic Church was for. For example, here's what he wrote. The point I refer to is the special reason why our reformers were burned. The principal reason why they were burned was because they refused one of the peculiar doctrines of the Romish Church. On that doctrine, in almost every case, hinged their life or death. If they admitted it, they might live. If they refused it, they must die. The doctrine in question was the real presence of the body and blood of Christ in the consecrated elements of bread and wine in the Lord's Supper. And just about everybody who was tried was tried for their rejection of transubstantiation. And so what we have here is Rome coming down hard and saying, you know, you have to bow to the host because that is Jesus Christ. And that's why you don't let the host drop on the ground because that is Jesus Christ. And you have the whole development of the mass, which is a re-crucifixion of the Lord Jesus Christ because literally they teach that the body and the blood of Christ is literally, physically, actually there in the elements. As stated before, Wycliffe boldly rejected this doctrine. In his lifetime, the Catholic authorities tried to condemn him for heresy, but failed repeatedly. Nevertheless, decades after his death, Rome would officially accurse him to the uttermost. Rome hated Wycliffe so much for bringing forth the Bible in English. It was the first um, a complete Bible in English. And Rome hated him so much for that, that they actually exhumed his corpse and um, smashed it to pieces and actually burnt the bone fragments. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Thomas Arundel, had called Wycliffe a child of the old devil, who had crowned his wickedness by translating the scriptures into the mother tongue. In 1428, the Church of Rome ordered Wycliffe's bones dug up and burned. He's here! I found him! The heretic is found! One can only imagine the intense hatred Rome must have had to dig up Wycliffe's bones 44 years after his death. 
While Wycliffe had never been excommunicated in his lifetime, the Council of Constance had officially anathematized or accursed him after his death. In the Middle Ages, when a person was anathematized, a ritual was held known as the bell, book, and candle ceremony, the words to which are well documented. Wycliffe's official cursing may have sounded something like this. We separate the same Wycliffe, together with his accomplices and the betters, from the precious body and blood of the Lord and from the society of all Christians. We exclude him from our Holy Mother, the Church, in heaven and on earth. We declare him excommunicate and anathema. We judge him damned with the devil and his angels in all the reprobate to eternal fire. So be it. They dug up his bones out of the Lutterworth churchyard. They burned him to ashes and dumped him into the river Swift. Uh, now the historian says that the river Swift uh, ran into the uh, Severn and the Severn into the narrow seas, thus illustrating how Wycliffe's doctrine spread throughout the world. Indeed, the teachings of John Wycliffe and the Bible he translated would continue to influence Christianity right up to the present day and would dramatically impact the greatest event of the Middle Ages.